of DIY home decor on a budget, then you definitely clicked on the right video because I have several Dollar Tree Christmas Big Lots dupes that I know you guys are gonna love. I would also like to thank Patty Well for sponsoring today's video. And with that being said, let's jump into today's DIYs. All right, party people, let's get this party started with a Dollar Tree box and this wooden dowel that I had left over from a different project and also one of these clear candy dishes from Dollar Tree. If you cannot find the clear candy dish, I know that this is a few years old. You can always use something else that looks similar. So I start off by marking where I need to cut down my dowel and then cutting that down. Next, I'm going to take these bamboo sticks that I got off Amazon, and I do have them linked in my Amazon shop for y'all in the description box below, as well as in the pinned comment. And I just start off by marking out one of the sides, cutting that down, and then gluing that down, cutting the exact same size piece, gluing that to the other side, and then measuring pieces for the outer edge, cutting those down and gluing those down as well. Once I had the frame glued down, then I go in and I mark for the X, cut those down and glue those down with my weld bond and hot glue to make sure that it stays in place nicely. Now I feel like I'm not the very best at explaining things, but I will do my best to explain how I do the cross pieces. So it's super easy. I don't use specific angles or anything like that. I literally just hold it up to the corner. I mark it with my pencil and then cut it down with my scissors. If it's a little bit too big, then I go ahead and cut more off and so on and so forth. When we get to the X piece, I cut the eggs like one whole piece and then once I have the ends cut to where I need them for the corners then I will go ahead and cut it down in the middle so that it can uh, cross over the uh, first X piece if that makes sense. Next I take my dowel rod and this already had holes in it. I forget why. I believe this dowel rod went to like a kid's teepee and my daughter just didn't use it. So I ended up just keeping the dowels and that is why it already had a hole in it. So I just take a dowel rod from Dollar Tree, a smaller dowel rod. I fit it in that hole so that you know that little flag pole on a light post. Um, that's the look I was going for even though the original one did not have one. But Y'all know I'm super extra. If you've been around for any amount of time, then you know just how extra your girl really is. So anyway, I cut that dowel rod, that dowel rod, excuse me, down to size. And then I also take some beads from Dollar Tree and the beads did not, uh, fit on the end of the small dowel rod so I did just take my miter shears and I kind of cut each end to a point. Next I stain all of my pieces with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and let them dry. Now for the beads on the flagpole, I did use two different size beads and for the smaller one, I glued that one down first and then stained my flagpole. For the larger bead, I did not glue that down, but I did stick it on the end so that it was easier to stain. Hey friends, so I want to thank Patio Well for sponsoring today's video. If you guys have never heard of Patio Well before, they sell very stylish and durable outdoor deck boxes and metal sheds. As many of you guys know, we just moved into our new home, so I'm always looking for new solutions for storage. So you guys can actually use this deck box outside. It's durable enough to withstand the weather, or it's also stylish enough 
that you can use it indoor. So I'm super excited. I know you guys will love this box as well. It was very easy to put together. I literally put it together all by myself. So I know that if I can do it, you can do it as well. I cannot stress to you guys enough how super simple this was to put together. It literally just snaps together. The only place that you need a screwdriver for is where the hinges go. And of course, I had my little helpers around to assist me. They absolutely loved this box. In fact, they wanted it for a little playhouse hideaway. But of course, I let them know that we needed to use it outside. So I hope that you guys will check this out. And I appreciate that this box can come in 31, 32, 100, or 120 gallons. So it's sure to fit any of your needs. Of course, my kids always leave their junk all around the yard, so I was super excited to put this away and get it nice and organized. So if you guys wanna get your deck box today, check the link down in the description box below. Let them know that I sent you. And with that being said, thank you Patio Well for sponsoring today's video. Next, I take this clear candy dish from Dollar Tree and I start off by taking the sticker off the bottom and then giving the inside a good coat of my matte Mod Podge. I then take some table salt and I just sprinkle that on the inside. I wanted it to give the illusion of snow. Now in the end, you really cannot tell. Um, once this Mod Podge was dry, you really couldn't tell. But in the original decor, the inside of the light looked frosted. So of course I wanted to go for that look. And then I painted the lid as well as the bottom edge of this candy dish with my Ink Waverly chalk paint. And I also gave it two good coats because one good coat you could still see through so once that paint was dry I did go in with a second coat Next, I take a set of fairy lights from Amazon. I give them in a big package and it, they're super cheap. I have them linked in my Amazon shop for y'all down below, but I just take one set of the fairy lights. I make sure that they work every time I use them and then I unravel it and stick that in my jar. I also put the battery pack at the bottom because from the outside, you could not see it. So I wasn't really worried about it being inside. Next, I take my little chip brush that I have linked in my Amazon shop as well and some white Waverly chalk paint and I heavily dry brush all the way around the box, the pole and the flagpole. Now in the original decor piece, um, it was heavily dry brushed, however, this is just for inspiration, y'all. If you do not like dry brushing, leave it out. If you do not like the colors I use, use different colors. I am just here solely for inspiration. That does not mean that you have to make your projects look exactly like mine. Next, I take my weld bond and some hot glue and I glue all of the pieces together. all know my famous line hindsight is 2020 and I did end up painting the inside of the 
pull as best as I could and I wish I didn't do that because it was tricky to get my flag pole through. Now I eventually got it just by like twisting it through there but it definitely was a challenge. My wrists are terrible since having my kids. Um, they finally got better after having Miss Izzy two years ago and then now after having JJ in October my wrists are back to being weak and so it's just something I have to deal with but um, next time if I did this I would totally not skip painting the inside but oh well you live and you learn right so moving on I take this fabric from Dollar Tree and I lay it out and then cut down a piece to size to get the sizing that I need, I just opened it up, held it up to my flagpole, and then cut it down. And I did cut it much bigger than I needed to because we're going to fold over the edges and glue them down. I also wanted to show you how I got the wrinkles out of this. I used my Downy Wrinkle Release Spray. And if you just spray it one time and then kind of like play with the fabric, the wrinkles come right out. And look how amazing this works. Quick little disclaimer, my little two month old buddy just woke up and he is sitting here eating so you might hear those noises. Sorry, not sorry, but I just wanted to let you know, no, it's not your dog. No, it's not your cat or your children. It's mine. <laughs> but anyway, I take the fabric and like I said, I hold it back up to my flagpole, make sure that I have the sizing correct and then glue down the sides to the back. Once again, y'all know I'm super duper extra and I really wanted this to look realistic and look like a flag. So I took a piece of wired ribbon and I made sure that the colors coordinated. So for this one, I used this ribbon because of the red edging. And then I just glued down the edging to the bottom and then I cut off that excess ribbon. Once that was finished, then I hold it back up to the flagpole once again, just kind of figuring out where I need the top to fold over at. And then once I figure that out, then I glue that down, leaving space at the top so that it can go on my flagpole. I also cut the other piece of that edging off and glued that down to the top of the or I should say at the bottom of my flag loop, if that makes sense. Um, if not, you can see what I did here. And then I just put my flag on the pole and look how singing cute this is already, y'all. I'm absolutely loving it so far. Next, I just glued down that bead to the side of the flag. And then I also glued down the jar to the pole with my weld bond and some hot glue. Next is the fun part. So here is where you get to be creative and add your own decorations or whatever you may please. Now I cut down one of these garland ties from Dollar Tree. I think they just look more high end when you give it a little haircut. So I did that. Now looking back, I wish that I would have just left it fluffy because in the original um, decor piece, the greenery around the pole was pretty bushy. Um, so I do wish that I would not have cut down the greenery, but that's okay. Once again, you live and you learn. Um, and if you guys like that fluffy look, then just don't cut yours down. So I just cut that down, like I said, and then glued that going around the pole. And then I also glued down another set of fairy lights. And y'all know I like to show y'all my mistakes because I am no perfect crafter. And if I can do it, I know y'all can do it as well. So I tried to glue the battery pack to the back and then I realized, 
girl, you use this box from Dollar Tree and it's hollow on the inside. So just go ahead and glue that to the inside of the box. So that's what I did once I realized my mistake. And then I also took Berry Garland around that greenery and lights as well. And I did use the red Berry Garland from Dollar Tree. And I also took some white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush and I just kind of dabbed some of that paint around the decorations to make it look like snow. Now you can make bows many different ways. If you guys need a bow tutorial, I will link that in the cards in the right hand corner for y'all. But I did go ahead and uh, make three loops from this red and white buffalo check ribbon. And then I just glue the loops down first in an X and then the last piece going across. And then for another loop, I just made a small loop and then glued that right to the middle. I also glued the middle ribbon down so that each side was a little bit fluffy, if that makes sense. You can see what I'm doing here. And then like I said, I glued down that small little loop. Once I was finished with that, then I made a tail by just cutting a piece and kind of like smushing it together so that it was um, glued down into a V. And then I glued that to the back of my bow and bing, bang, boom, you have a high-end gorgeous looking bow that was super simple to make. And then I glued that to the bottom of the jar and the top of my pole. And y'all, look how absolutely stunning this turned out. Now, yes, this is much smaller than the one from Big Lots. However, um, I just did not have the supplies to make a big one. I do, however, want to make a bigger one, but I'm in my kitchen right now. It's kind of hard to do bigger projects, so I figured that I would bring you the smaller version, and I absolutely love the way that this turned out, and I can't wait to hear what y'all think down in the comments. And if y'all are enjoying this video and you have not subscribed yet, I would love to have you. Also, if you could please share this out, it really helps my channel to grow. For DIY number two, I take two of these longer signs from Dollar Tree that I got back at Easter and I lay out my letters and then cut those pieces down to the size that I need. These are so simple to cut. All you have to do is just use your utility knife to score it just a few times. Then you can bend it backwards and cut it from the back. If you're left with a little bit of excess material, all you have to do is just cut that down with some scissors and then sand it down smooth and I do repeat that for the second sign. In order to attach this together, I take four jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart. I put some dabs of my weld bond on them, and then I also use some hot glue to glue these together. I then take my square dowels, which are, you guessed it, down in the description box in my Amazon shop, as well as the pinned comment. And I just measure out the sides, cut those down with my miter shears, once again, linked in my Amazon shop. And then I glue down the sides and then cut the bottom and top piece down to size and glue those down the same way with a few dabs of my weld bond and some hot glue. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using both glues, the weld bond is going to ensure that the hold lasts a really long time. And then the hot glue is just going to hold it together quickly so that the weld bond has time to set up. I'm sorry, my head is in the way, um, but y'all... <laughs> 
<laughs> if you could see the way I have to film these days, it's pretty interesting. The odds are always stacked against me and somehow, some way, I always get it done and I'm just super grateful for that. So I got to do what I got to do these days and that's okay. That's just the season of life I'm in and there will definitely be new seasons. So I'm just trying to soak up this season as best as possible because there's only one little newborn infant stage. So I'm just trying to enjoy it while I can. But once I had my frame glued down, then I take my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and I stain the entire thing. Once my stain was dry, then I take an HME from my chalk site. You can find that once again linked in all the places. And I just lay out my letters, making sure that I have them spaced correctly. I also make a little wreath with that same garland tie from Dollar Tree. And then I transfer on my letters with my white chalk paste. And this is exactly why I use Chalk Couture and love it so much because once you peel back that transfer, you reveal your crisp, gorgeous image and it literally is easy as one, two, three. I could do it with my eyes closed and my famous saying, because when my daughter was five years old, she could chalk like a pro. So I always say, if my five-year-old can do it, I know that you can do it as well. And that's one of my favorite parts because it's super beginner friendly. So if y'all wanna learn how to get 40% off, of everything on my chalk site, definitely text my number, the word chalk, and I'll get that info over to you. Next, I take my wreath and I gave it a little haircut. And then I also took this greenery that I got from Timu. Y'all, I'm so excited. If you've never heard about Timu, it is a super cheap app. And I have an exclusive or a dedicated Timu video coming up using all their items to do DIY. So I'm super excited about that. But the, the greenery that I just used was one of the items that I ended up grabbing. And it literally... It literally looked identical to the greenery in the original sign. So I just cut that down and glued that down around my wreath. Next, I took these beads from Dollar Tree and I just kind of measure out what I need and just kind of pull it apart. That way I know the beads that I need to paint. And I used my gold chalk paste to kind of dab that paste on every other bead. I then make two simple tassels using some Dollar Tree jute by wrapping it around my hand about 20 times. And then once I cut that, I take another piece, tie it to the top of my like loop, if you will. I double knot that and then cut it at the bottom. I also take another piece of jute and I tie that close to the top of the loop and then I string that through on the end of my uh, beaded garland on either side. I also made sure to give these a little haircut to make sure that they looked cohesive. If the tassels are too long, it just looks disproportionate, doesn't look right. So make sure that if you recreate this sign that your tassels are to size. Once I had my tassels cut, then I just go ahead and glue my beaded garland down with some hot glue. And literally y'all, that was it. I cannot get over the price $35 for that sign when we literally made ours for less than $5. So let me know down in the comments, will you guys be making this project and what you guys think of it?
Okay, friends, moving on to the last and final DIY. I take this wreath ring, wreath ring. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, my mom brain these days is really insane. But anyway, I take this wreath ring from Dollar Tree and I take my 20 millimeter beads that I get from Amazon. Yep, you know it, linked in my Amazon shop down below. And I just start by putting the beads halfway around the ring. And then once I get halfway, I go ahead and glue three of the beads together on one side. I then finish my beads all the way around and then once I get to the last third piece, if that makes sense, I also start hot gluing that so that way once we hang this up, it's not going to come apart. For the last bead, I glued the inside as well as the outside to make sure, like I said, this stays together really nicely. Next, I took that same greenery from Timu, and I also wanted to mention how cheap this was. I believe this pack of greenery was like two or three bucks. Don't quote me, but I do know that it was way cheap. I couldn't get over it, and you get 10 picks in one pack. So I take two, two of the picks, and I bend them so that they fit nicely at the bottom and glue that down. I also took these picks that I got from Walmart and they were only $1.28. So I feel like for three cents more than what you can get at Dollar Tree, these just look way more high end than anything you'll find at Dollar Tree. So I take two of those, do the exact same thing, glue those down with some hot glue. And then for the bow, I got this ribbon at Walmart and I was not sure what kind of bow I wanted to make. Um, but in the original project, it did like have this fluffy bow, but it was kind of messed up and all smashed and smushed. It didn't look right. So of course, I wanted to make mine look way prettier. So I just uh, fold this over on itself four times. No, six times. No, four times. Yes, four times. <laughs> I fold this over four times and then I cut little slits on either side of it. I also take a piece of jute and then tie that in the middle, double knotting it and cutting off the excess. Once I cut off the excess of the jute, then I just go ahead and fluff up my bow. And yes, I was right y'all, six times. I did fold this over six times, I'm sorry. I couldn't remember because I think originally I was just going to do four loops and then I did want it more fluffier so I ended up doing two more. Once I had that part done, then once again I'm going to make the tail by just cutting a piece of ribbon and kind of smushing it at the top to a V gluing it in place and then I realized that it was just a little bit too tall for the back of my bow so I just cut that down flat and then glued it to the back and glued that down to the middle of the greenery. And last but most certainly not least I take a unfinished wooden star from Dollar Tree and I glue that to the middle of my bow. Oh my goodness, my sweet friends. Look how absolutely gorgeous this turned out. I am just loving that greenery against that unfinished wood with the ribbon. I just think it looks so gorgeous. I love it way better than the original one. I'm curious to hear what you guys think down below. Which was your favorite project? Comment down below and vote for me. Also, y'all, please share this out. Really, YouTube only cares about sharing and watch time anymore. When you guys skip through, it hurts my channel. So if you can watch it start to finish, I would greatly appreciate it. So really, those shares really help my channel to grow. And I just appreciate every single one of y'all so much. We're on the road to 100K, you guys. I'm super grateful. I'm super blessed. And I just want y'all to know how lucky I feel to have you all. With that being said, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for supporting me in every single thing that I do. If you guys want any chalk couture or ketone information on how I just recently lost 60 pounds in six months, and then I've lost 45 pounds since having my son two months ago. So that's pretty freaking amazing. And I would love to help y'all look and feel better as well. So just text my number. Um, I will leave it right here for y'all. And with that being said, if nobody has told you today, you're absolutely stunning. You're worthy. You're gorgeous. You literally can do anything you set your mind to coming from 
an addict, eight years sober. I know that if I can do it, you can do it as well. I love y'all so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.